This episode of We Like Shooting Double Tap is brought to you by Polymer 80, Hackett Equipment, Medical Gear Outfitters, the Sonoran Desert Institute, and the Patriot Patch Company. Are you okay? Welcome to We Like Shooting Double Tap, episode 162, where we answer your questions, ask a few of our own, and touch base on gun industry news. Our panel tonight, River's Edge Tacticals, Jeremy Paz, Derek, we got the Machine Gun Moses, Aaron Krieger, Nick Lynch by my side, Alex, Control Pew is in the house, my name is Sean Heron, and I want to welcome you all to the show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Okay, I'm fading it out. God, why is this music so long? It's still 10 seconds. Do you know how long 10 seconds is? Yes. It's long enough. It's this long. Okay, well, all right, it's finally gone. Everything's fine. Aaron, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm well. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, Mike M says, W else is life. Mike F says, good evening, guys. Catholic gundamentalist said, hey, Nick's not dead. Nick says first, but you were clearly seventh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Uh, Trevor F says, first successful 3D print of a Glock 43 frame today happened. That's Woo-hoo. awesome. Skinny medic in the house. Dustin H says, looks like Sean's going to spend all episodes searching and buying stuff again. True. Uh, Nick F says barely late and Mark B says, Hey Sean, thanks for getting those second call defense answers for me. I'm all signed up. Awesome, man. And Mike F just recently followed you because of these guys. Great content. And I guess that'll do it for all that. Uh, let's get into this. Can we just spend the next hour just reading comments? I was trying. That'll, that'll be the show. I was trying something new. Get off my back. Yeah. But what if that was the show? I mean, we could, can we put a timer on the show? So in an hour, it just shuts off regardless. Yeah. Uh, here. Like, I'm into that. I'm setting a timer Hard right cut now. To black. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, yep. It'll be like painted black, dude. There'll be a big argument at the end, and then it'll just cut somebody off mid sentence, and that'll be it. <laughs> that would be actually great. <laughs> God, <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> mother. <laughs> All right, before and then it's like, and then it's like uh, uh, the TV at midnight when you guys were kids, <laughs> dude. I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> it just went to. <laughs> I can't I can't actually play taps because there's some head on YouTube that always puts in a copyright claim for it and it takes me like three weeks to get it back on YouTube which is the biggest load of that I've ever heard in my entire life but whatever so much oh, let me hit this one more time so anyway uh <laughs> Uh, first up, we're going to talk about Polymer 80. Uh, we have the video, Aaron is editing it right now, of the PF320 PTEX, which is basically their uh, P, P320 from Six Hour Frame, and it's kind of badass. We actually liked it a whole ton. We did it on a couple different SIG P320s, and I really like it. So we even have the um, Magwell that goes with it, which is pretty brand new and pretty awesome as well. Go to Polymer80.com, use coupon code WLS is life, and that saves you 15% off all day, every day. Go see what's in stock and buy it. Ooh, the Magwells. They have a section now under pistols for Magwells, and it looks like they are all in stock. They've got the compact for the 320 in three different colors, red, gray, and black. Nick, what color would you pick? Uh, Probably gray, because I feel like that matches my personality the best. Today, that's definitely sure. Every day. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold up. <laughs> Uh, Tyler R is in the chat. He said, Hey bags, let's talk about optics uh, He sent us a message the other day. He's like, if you guys are, I don't remember specifically what it was, but he's like, you guys are dumb. I work there. If you need help with the website, call me and I'll, I'll help you through it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So is the help that we need that nothing is actually in stock? Oh boy. Here we go. Go I ahead. Use some of that help. Okay. Like, yeah. Put it on your f-ing website. Yeah, I've had three of the, uh, the the SB Tactical braces on order for like three months, and I, Mac Tens, man, we need braces. Tyler, this is your fault. I did not. You did this, not me. <laughs> anyway, hi Tyler. I'm glad you're back. Where are we? Uh, wacky weapons. This is where Aaron comes up with a wacky weapon, and then we talk about it for a couple of minutes, and then we move on. Aaron, what are we going to talk I, about? I just want to point out that I actually didn't come up with the weapon. I didn't create it. I didn't design it. I didn't make it. Oh, I well, just found it. Then I'm not interested. Okay. I think, wasn't the one you were talking about earlier a pepper box? No. Okay. So I was looking for a specific fire, uh, a weapon. Uh, I, what it was was that it was an attachment that went on t- 
to a front of a gun. And when you shot it, it shot out like a hundred or a thousand little uh, needles into whatever um, whatever you're aiming at. So basically, it was like an area weapon. Just shoot it. It's like, a, but they were they were considered illegal because it was like a buckshot, and you know, uh, from a rifle, like a shotgun, and you're not allowed to use that in war, apparently. So anyhow, I did find what? was known as the Beehive, and what the Beehive is is. It shoots. Uh, f- what you say? What did you call those? They're not fl- uh, flechettes. Flechettes. Fleche. Fleche. And it basically, it shoots okay, like a hundred of these things. Yeah, we're American, uh, Jeremy. Yeah. So it's basically like a, a shotgun shell, but it would shoot. Uh, this one was was put into a howitzer, and the howitzer would be leveled uh, horizontal, so it wasn't facing upward, and it would be aimed at the uh, group, and it would just kind of clear out an area really quickly. Yeah, so basically they would put them on Cobra helicopters and they would shoot like ba- two at a time. But it really it was like an IED from the air at super fast rates. So I mean, it's like a, it's a missile, and there was like six rows of nails, actual nails, but instead of the head of a nail, it had like a little. They looked a little bit like the churro bullets. Yep, uh, it, it had hmm. those. So then they t- they did a thing where there was some uh, reporter who's embedded, and they did a practice run. And they shot a bunch of empty ammunition boxes, and the nails just like went through the wood ammunition boxes, and it was actually kind of terrible. And Aaron, didn't they like send up green flares ahead of time so that lo- the friendly troops knew that they were about to pepper the area with flechettes? <laughs> right, they're about to die painfully. Hey, look it, <laughs> this is gonna suck. It's what they saw, you know. Yes, <laughs> Fle- I shoot flesh hats. Yeah. Yes, you, no, you can. No, not well, yeah. I mean that that would actually be pretty cool. Uh, Alex, have you ever seen one of these? Ah, uh, no, not since like Battlefield Three. <laughs> that, was, that was that was the last time I had any, any experience with flesh hat rounds. Yeah. Uh, hey, speaking of rounds, uh, Pew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see the? Uh, we were talking about it on the show Monday night. Uh, 3D I did. Print- you did. So you saw the three D printed uh, uh, fuel. Yeah, I was, I was I was lurking in your chat. Um, so I, I, I've got I got some beef with this because they took a high explosive, put it in resin, and then retarded the whole explosive down so it would actually work as like a a, a propellant charge instead of just an explosive charge. Um, so it's an interesting idea, but like you started with like I, I started with a hand grenade and I made a pineapple explode. You know, it, it, they didn't start with like a, a anything. It's an interesting application, but they started with like too technologically advanced a level. Like they need to dial it back and and make it work with something like a, a common smokeless powder or something of that nature. Could you do that? I mean, could you add it to the resin? I mean, it, it's so. What I think what happened was the resin actually like diluted the explosive enough to make it work as a propellant, whereas like a smokeless powder is already. Not it's not that powerful of an explosive, so if you put that in resin, it would be an even less powerful explosive, and so you get to this point where it's just not worth putting it in a in a bullet. Um, so what I don't we know. Need it's, it's an interesting idea, but it's it, uh, deck board. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. So, so what we need is deck cord fed into a three D printer. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that seems dangerous. But I was just that thinking, fun. yeah, like <laughs> you take a bunch of 3D printer filament and a bunch mm-hmm. of smokeless gunpowder and you melt it all together, hopefully below the flashpoint, and then you mix it all up and then you extrude that into new filament and then you just 3D print like right. a powder charge. Yeah, the, I, I don't know that we'd use FDM printers for that because the, 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 the actual like melty part gets kind of hot for any sort of explosive. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'd do like an SLA printer for that and mix it with a resin and, and do like a, a UV curing on it or something like that. So a little great. bit different, a little bit different in like operational stack there, but it's uh, so Sean's got to buy a new, got to buy a new printer and a UV light. No man. Yeah. So if you if you go to <laughs> go to Amazon, type in Elegumar. Um, yeah, it, it's it's it could be interesting. Um, I don't know that it it's got value. Um, in the in like the day to day sort of, um, yeah, I, I don't know that it's going to do anything groundbreaking for like the, the average shooter, the average printer. Um, Not today. I don't know. 
but yeah. someday. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what the next iteration of this is. Don't Maybe ruin this for me. A, a reasonable, like, DIY homemade powder solution. Um, that might maybe we can see some some crossover there that'd be awesome i'm ready oh and that guy uh tyler from that works at optics planet he actually mm-hmm. did send links so i'm going to tell you what he says so when you're looking at a product there's some little arrows and it says check availability that means it's out of stock but then there's a truck under some of them and it says in stock and that's in stock but, okay, but why not just say out of stock if it's out of stock i don't know man because you can yes. still add to your cart and go through the checkout process for something Why that is out of stock. Why do I have to stock. click a button to see if it's in stock? Why can't you just tell yeah. me that it's in stock? It is, um, it is intentionally misleading, God. I'm yeah. just the messenger. <laughs> Tyler. But Jeez, anyway. Sean. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the beehive, uh, very evil. And I mean, it's like it's like an IED from the sky, basically, right? Like, it's it terrible. Be, so, yeah, you, I mean, there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, 100% agree. All right, let's move on. All right, so two Mondays ago, uh, I challenged everybody to go to medicalgearoutfitters.com and buy a cat tourniquet. Let's challenge everybody to go buy something else today. A mouse tourniquet. What's the next most important thing uh, in your med kit, would you say? Dog tourniquet. Hmm? What about elephant tourniquets? Wait. I think you have misunderstood me, sir. <laughs> well, well, I need, an, I elephant need an elephant tourniquet. Wouldn't that be just like a belt? Yeah, no, but that's it, what I need. It'd be like 10 belts, and you'd have to use a Volkswagen to tie. You, no, it's it's one of those ratchet straps you use for your pickup truck. No, so you tie like a toe strap to the back end of a Volkswagen bug. You tie the other end to an elephant's leg, and then you have the the bug circle the elephant like the what fr- is this, like at yeah exactly like, right. wait, wait that's exactly is it, it is it a toe strap because you're wrapping it around the elephant's leg if you wrapped it around the elephant's arm would it be a finger strap do elephants have arms i don't yes. i don't know i don't do think they do i think have they have arms? four legs or they yeah. just have tentacles i think they have four i don't they have think arms. they have tentacles either don't they have arms they have a proboscis what no they do not yeah my okay. are a proboscis well yeah they are You're or a nose? Yeah. <laughs> like a this little... Is human horn. That's proboscis. Anyway. Sean's always masticating. All right, so we did a, a cat tourniquet, so we, we're still in bleeding control. He's a masterful masticator. That is true. <laughs> uh, well, clearly, I chew well because I'm fat. Uh, but, so we're still in bleeding control, so after tourniquet, what's next, guys? Gunshot to the head. <laughs> what? Probably usually death. <laughs> no. Mercy or kill. Or maybe an amputation. Okay, for bleeding control... Oh, in your medical control. kit, what 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 else do we need in addition to a cat tourniquet? Gunpowder and a match, because that's what Rambo did when he got shot. Remember that was that, pretty baller. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, it seemed like it'd be very healthy. You know, I watched that movie you guys were talking about. Which um, one? The uh, Bravo Two. Yeah. Whatever. Bravo two zero. Oh yeah. Bravo Two Zero. Yeah. Um, the Kajaki Dam or whatever. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure after the tourniquet comes landmines. More landmines. Okay. Well, then the helicopter comes to, to, to yeah. for more landlines. All right. Well, that was a good movie, though, don't you think? Yeah, it was a re- for more landlines. Yes. I, land I went lines. into it expecting like a mediocre action movie with like lots of shooting and stuff, and it, I was like, I'll put this on and fall asleep, and then maybe finish it tomorrow if it's any good. Mm. And I stayed up way too late and watched the whole thing, and it was so good. Yeah, I loved it. It yeah. was good. Right? I, I was glued to it the whole time. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, well, I'm going to let you guys in on it. So tourniquets mm-hmm. and some kind of hemostatic gauze. So I'm going to recommend that you go to medicalgearoutfitters.com and you click on the uh, search. Actually, let me start over. Go to components, hemostatics, and then get the quick clot EMS rolled gauze. So there's quick clot combat gauze. There's sealox. Uh, there's several different things, but the quick clot EMS rolled gauze so it's basically less of the hemostatic gauze, but it's twenty four ninety nine compared to Quick Clot, which is forty five bucks. Dang. Yeah. So it's less of it, but then you can just backfill it with regular gauze once you get the hemostatic agent right up against the source of the bleed. So yeah, uh, I recommended cool. the cat tourniquet twenty five bucks this week. Go go buy the uh, Quick Clot EMS rolled gauze, which is your hemostatic agent, and we'll just keep doing this. Don't forget to use coupon code. We like shooting. We need to take over as the number one coupon code used over that dumb civilian medical podcast code because WLS yes. is in second place right now. Hey, do you think that guy that had the big old like wound in his armpit 
if they'd been able to pack some hemostatic gauze in there, do you think that would have helped him out? Depending on depth of the source of the bleed, like if it, it was, if, it, if it was the brachial artery, probably. If it was something deeper in the chest, mm-hmm. probably not. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, medicalgearoutfitters dot com coupon code. We like shooting saves you money. Let's answer some questions. Burn when you pee? Unsure about your relationship? Why can't you use 45 in a 9mm? Get your questions answered on hashtag DearWLS. Visit WeLikeShooting.com slash DearWLS to submit your questions. All right. Nick, I would like you to take the first question. Oh, jeez. Are you, are you sure about this? Yeah. Oh, is it because it's really short? Yeah. Well, oh. it's because it's also from Nick. Nick T. says... Looking for the best. Hey, nice name, by the way. Good yeah, job. Thanks. Good job, your parents. Yeah. Um, unless you changed your name legally and chose that for yourself. And in that case, good job. All right. Nick T says, looking for the best 45 pistol for a suppressor. What are your suggestions? I have no f-ing clue. What do you, hey, Jeremy, what do you think? It doesn't exist. <laughs> Please okay. elaborate. The best forty-five suppressor has yet to be invented. No, 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 no. no. no, no. The pistol best pistol in forty-five ACP for a suppressor hasn't been invented yet. Loaded question. Well, hopefully you're. It's a loaded question. It. What is your no, it's favorite a loaded question? Forty-five what is the best suppressor host in a forty-five pistol. Yes, I would hope the it's one loaded. that fits your hand the best that you like the best this with a threaded barrel. My Oof. Nick, what do you think? Uh, I kind of agree. Like if it's a decent 45 auto, I don't know, go get like a nice 1911 or uh, an FNX or Whoa. I hear I have an FNX 45 tactical on my hip. Yeah, that is what I like. It fits me well. The SIG 227 with a threaded barrel, if you can find one, I know somebody out there makes an aftermarket threaded barrel for it, though I don't know if it actually ever came with one. Um, a two, a, a, a SIG two twenty with a threaded barrel, uh, a nineteen eleven with a threaded barrel, uh, an XD with a threaded barrel, an M and P with a threaded barrel, a Glock with a threaded barrel. They all work. A USP with a threaded barrel. A USP or, with a threaded or barrel. as Roden says, HK forty five with a what threaded about a barrel. high point with a threaded yeah. barrel. A no. high point with a threaded barrel would be amazing. Although it is direct blowback, and I feel like the back pressure would make it cycle much harder. Oh God. Thank you, James, for for clearing this up. He said he's asking your opinion, you mooks. Alex, what what would what would your favorite host for a forty five suppressor be? I mean, I want to go with like the high point, um, <laughs> and uh, doubly so because we're in a beta on uh, a forty five high point, and part of the beta hey, is sound a, like a beta. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ah, oh, that hurt my soul. One of those oh, blue fighting no. fish. That's what he's talking about. Right? Those things are hardcore. I, I'm, well, I'm you know, they come in multiple angry. colors. By the <laughs> way. I'm aquatic. No. Uh, we're, we're in a beta on the uh, the high points for the, the 45 cal high point, and part of the beta is a suppressor that you mount on the rail that you can print. So what? that's what I'm going with. Okay. Now, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you had my interest. Now you have my attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find a picture so I can throw it up real quick. I have printed the low point. Uh, I haven't put it together yet. I took apart one of the high points that I bought used, and the barrel was basically the barrel extension was cracked in half. So I have to send in nice. the whole pistol because they won't just send me a barrel. Uh, <laughs> which I mean, that's fair. Like they're gonna go through the gun and make sure that everything is uh, up to speed. So now I have to take apart another high point. And let me just mention this to you that high points are not a simple thing to take down. Like there's a lot of, they're a little annoying. (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot of in there. So I have to take apart another one and then uh, assemble it. Anyway, I I wonder about the barrel, if that was just a recent thing or if that's always been our policy. So that gun I bought used and it has, Oh, that, uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, (laughs) if honestly, if it's recent, it's your (laughs) fault, Alex. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Totally. It is. Sorry about that. (laughs) I told him, I was like, I'm not putting it back together. It's like all the parts, every single thing is just in a sandwich bag. And that's what I'm sending them. I, uh, I take back my, my original answer. Okay. With just listing off a bunch of stuff. Get a Mark 23. HK Mark 23. Okay. I don't Those things. Know. It's, it's massive. 
it was designed to be shot suppressed a lot, oh. a lot, a lot. I have seen those. I mean, if we're spending HK money, just get a UMP forty five, but mm-hmm. not a not 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 like a rifle or a, a, a subgun version, like just a regular receiver. A Build it yourself into like a, a pistol version, and then put a suppressor on it. I like it. Thank you for calling HK customer service. Go f- yourself. Click. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Aaron, take the next question. No. Please? It's so long. Yeah. Do you really want me to read it? I mean, not really, but I can't read every question. Did you read the last one? No. Okay, so you're not reading every The first question. line is, this question is for Sean. I don't think I should read that. See, it's kind of like catered right to you. No. Okay. <laughs> Are you planning to upgrade your SKS? If so, what upgrades? If not, why not? As a Type 56 owner... I will tell you a few key ones that are very nice. They make drop-in spring-loaded titanium SKS firing pins. I I recommend that for the drop-safe factor. There are two recoil buffers, an insert for the receiver uh, cover and an H-type insert for the receiver. I suggest at least getting the H-type as it saves the rear of the receiver from from contact from the bolt. The receiver cover insert buffers the spring it doesn't do much, in my opinion. So far, there really hasn't been. A, there's been one question here so far. So I'm not sure if it's a lot of questions for you, but I'm going to continue. Okay. These last upgrades will only make you jealous, given the given the fascist laws in place in your state. There is an extended magazine catch you can install, which makes sw- sw- swiping out a 20 round Tapco detachable duck build mags very easy, as long as the bolt carrier. So how it's not how you spell carrier. Two R's, but whatever. Is back since the guide rails run through the magazine lips. Mm, that sounds kind of hot. <laughs> and while installing the ext- extractor catch, you can you can buff the sear surfaces for a smoother trigger. <laughs> Lastly, they made a seventy-five or seventy-eight round, if you try, drum mag for the SKS, which runs like a champ. If you don't ever wind, uh, if you don't overwind the follower spring, maybe freedom-loving Jeremy can hold it for you. Uh, for when you come down and come over to play, there are optic mounts available for her. Also, I guess your your gun's a girl. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. As gas, a gas tube rail, or a replacement receiver cover with a rail on top. I want to make fun of this <laughs> so hard. I mean, okay. No, I am not going to upgrade my SKS. Why? I because I love it exactly how it is. It's a $20 com block piece of shit, and when you blow it up, you just buy, buy another one? Yeah, I paid $350 for it. Well, you I paid too much. You, no, I, say, I, I actually got a pretty good much. deal. I got a pretty good deal because they're going for like four plus. Um, no, I, I really don't want to. Like, I know Matador Arms has some good stuff for SKSs, um, but I really just like it the way it is. I Like, I have better things that shoot 762 by 39 if I want them. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is because I really f-ing love it exactly how it is. I don't know. That drum mag does sound pretty cool. Yeah. It's but, sticking through the feeder lips. Yeah. I'm Maybe not going to have a case for that. Yeah. I'm not going to upgrade it. Um, I thought I might before I actually got it in and spent six hours cleaning all the Cosmoline off of it. But now that I've done that, like, I'm just, I don't know. I really, I really do love it. I like how we review guns, like not for a living, but near for a living and this fucker thinks he's got the magic sauce that we never heard of this and he just rips off lists off like the most vanilla ever involved with an sks <laughs> it's true i mean you know i just want to say vanilla is a is a top rated selling ice cream out there vanilla is pretty sure. good vanilla yeah, like is vanilla. actually good I, I like it a lot but uh i don't know what do you what do you alex would you upgrade an sks I don't think I would. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a dollars versus time thing. Like, if I had a million dollars just to fart around with guns, you know, I, well, no, I'm pretty sure I could burn a million dollars farting around with like guns. But if if I if I had nothing else, and like the SKS was at the li- on the list, I'm like, all right, yeah. But until then, right, I've got like a Maxim gun to go play with and stuff like that. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Aaron, would you upgrade your SKS? Uh, I may add a optics mount on it, but that's about the extent of it. Nick, but don't don't get the dust cover one. They don't they don't work well. 
Is it just like an AK because it's just wobbly? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Hey, Sean, did you know Tapco makes the SKS stock? Yes, I did. It's a tool. If if, <laughs> <laughs> if I lived in Canada, I might. Um, although w- with their laws changing recently, our SKS is now not the way they used to be. I mean, cause it used to be like you could buy an SKS and take it out and shoot it in the woods and stuff, but in a woods. I mean, you're still limited to like ten rounds, but yeah. But I mean, I don't know. If I, don't I could know if buy, dodge the bullet or not. If I could buy a super cheap SKS, and that was one of my few reasonably priced options, and you know, go shoot it in the woods or whatever, I might buy two and leave one alone and um, have one that I made all crazy. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I thought about that too, but I probably will never spend another three hundred fifty bucks on another SKS. Oh no, no, I wouldn't in in the U.S. No, uh, I will say this: uh, the tight, ti- uh, what is it? Yeah, the titanium, titanium SKS firing pins. So they're spring loaded, um, spring loaded titanium SKS firing pins. Like if I was going to do something, it might be that because I've heard that sometimes on occasion. The firing pin, pin will stick forward, which results in a lot oh, of battery. very quick fun. No, it basically goes full auto. Slam fires. Oh. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, so here's what you do. You weld the firing pin into place. <laughs> exactly. And then you make it that open bolt. Mm. Like if, if you're going to talk about a upgrade on a piece of SKS, that's the <laughs> upgrade. Not did you know they make a 75 round magazine off? Well, the only problem with that, though, is once you pull the trigger, you're done, you've got to spend the entire magazine. Not if you make it open, bolt. You're just talking about a stuck firing pin. I'm talking yeah. about actually making a mechanism where the trigger releases the bolt and it is just held by a sear. Okay. That would be that fun. That doable. That would be fun. I agree. Uh, okay. Jeremy, why don't you take the next question from Jack B? As long as it's not some SKS I like the SKS. It's awesome. It's a fun gun. I was talking about that f-ing post. Oh. Did you know? <laughs> no, I didn't f-ing know. Everybody f-ing knows. I didn't know about some of those. <laughs> then you're an idiot. And neither did you. F-ing. You didn't know about every I single one of those. All of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Read the f-ing question. Jack B. What's the difference between a single stage and a two stage trigger? Explain it like I'm a dumbass Savage One R. Uh, oh, like I'm as dumb as Savage One R. I just that was wishful thinking. But you actually like me. Can you tell the difference when you work the trigger? What are the pros and cons? And when would you want each type? All right. Single stage trigger is like a dry spaghetti noodle. It goes snap. Two stage trigger is like a slightly cooked spaghetti noodle that bends a little bit but still snaps. That was pretty good. God, good explanation. All right. Now, when when would you want one and when would you want the other? Personal preference. Next. Historically, <laughs> historically, I think a lot got of, an hour. <laughs> historically, I think a lot of people actually uh, want the double stage for uh, long distance or pre- precision I shooting. I don't I prefer single stage with yeah. everything. So do I. I agree. I'm single stage on everything. I don't ever want a two stage trigger. Like it basically, and, it, it's got a bunch of take up, and then you hit the wall, and then once you hit the wall, you actually pull it a little more, and it shoots. Like I don't get it. It's just like a trigger kind of I don't like know. runs up to the wall and then it acts like a single stage like, yeah I don't want that I just got snubbed uh <laughs> yeah and and I really only see that on gas guns like ARs and stuff uh like people don't really set up bolt guns at least not that I have seen um, yeah I have a six ounce Timney on my yeah yeah gun. with with two stage triggers like yeah I I don't personally have yeah I, I don't like them Go single stage. Don't like it. Nope. Don't yeah. like it. No, Alex, sir. Alex, any like thoughts it. there? Single stage, 100%. All right, yeah. I think we're all kind of on the same page there. This is the most boringest discussion ever. Thank you, Paz. <laughs> what? What? It's, that's why I said over next. Yeah. Tyler A says, looking at upgrading one of my AR-15s and keeping the current parts for future use, in what order would you recommend parts get upgraded with what? I'm thinking of replacing in no particular order. BCG, charging handle, trigger, adjustable stocks, braces, I'm not looking to upgrade optics at this time. Thanks for your input. Hashtag WLS is life. Hmm. I usually go trigger, then uh, stock, then BCG, then charging handle. I don't know. I, do you guys actually replace your BCGs often? or do you, 
If one uh, is is a nicer presents itself, yeah, but like yes. when when you say nicer, like what makes a nicer BCG? Uh, I know, titanium, like I know, like uh, finishes, yeah, machining sometimes, but like don't get me wrong, it's nice to have a nickel boron or a titanium nitride or a black nitride. Like those are nice upgrades. It's not f-ing needed. Um, I re- I have one of the gold titanium nitride ones, and the only thing that I really f-ing loved about that thing, you could tell when it was clean. Mm-hmm. You really can't tell when a phosphate bolt carrier is like looking at it. You can't tell it's clean. Yeah. Nick, like that's the only nice part about like a nickel boron or a titanium nitrided one. Um, yes, it has a higher lubricity and all the, <laughs> you know, hoity toity <laughs> you want to get into, but like Nick, uh, I don't know. Shoot, shoot the thing, figure out what you like the least about it and then change that. I would say, I would probably change the charging handle first if it was just like a standard charging handle because I hate those. I will usually throw a bigger charging handle on, but I don't like the Ambi ones. I mean, I don't care about the Ambi ones because I would charge pretty much the same way, but I generally buy the Ambi ones just just in case. I mean, if I'm upgrading it in the first place, the one that I like is Ambi, so I just get it, whatever. Yeah. Every single one of my ARs has um, has a phase five bolt assist lever off the bolt catch. Yeah, I remember 2015 as well. Dude, I f-ing love them. I don't f-ing you. <laughs> <laughs> I f-ing like them. Eat and die. Um, it's corn uh, in it, by I'm the trying way. to think. They all have some form of over oversized uh, charging handle lever on them. Whether it's some of the cheaper ones have like a cheap UTG one, and some of them are the Phase Five, and some of them are like just altogether new bulk carriers that are better. Or I'm sorry, not bull carriers, charging handles. Um, but like, yeah, if it comes with a bull carrier, I'm if I get to, if I'm building it, I'll throw in a nice bull carrier. But if it comes with one, I'm not gonna buy another one. That seems Whoa. dumb. That that's a 15 minute timer to let me know that it's time for an ad read. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> gone. <laughs> so that's the second. So we're a half hour in then, basically. Yes, we are. We're a half hour in exactly. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like charging handle, sure. I probably wouldn't replace my BCG unless it was causing me problems. Um, trigger, yeah, I like good triggers, but I mean, even mil spec can be modified or adjusted oh, I'm a, to. I'm a trigger. I I am too. I like clearly, I'm a trigger. But I would get a trigger, a charging handle, and then depending on what the stock is, yeah. Just find one that you like. I, the stock that I use the most out of anything is just the MFT Minimalist, like 40 bucks. So we're just going to ignore the Dolphin thing then? Alex, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to finish this question. Then I'm going to do it. Alex, uh, wh- what about you? What are you, what are you changing? I mean, uh, I just right off the bat, the first thing I'll do is the trigger and the, and the, the charging handle. Um, but, like, I build my guns, so... The two guns that I'm turning to for like a use are, you know, I bought those parts, so there's no more upgrading to be done there. Everything else I'm running like the cheapest PSA forty dollar bolt that I can find because I needed to get like fifty of them to <laughs> to build all the different rifles I'm putting together. Right. So I, I've got two that are really really nice, and then everything else is like whatever I can find that's dirt cheap and functions. Yep, totally agree. So anyway, uh, Tyler, uh, wait, is this the Tyler that called us? No, different guy. Sorry. Maybe. Uh, I think it was just you. No, it had an S on it. It was plural. It was, oh. it was all of us. <laughs> Whatever, Alex. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I guess it is time now to uh, play this. And that brings us to Hackett Equipment. So Dude, I love hacking equipment. <laughs> when he was on the show two weeks ago, uh, the people were saying that they had never that there's no like comparisons of the Berthas, and I was like, yeah, I'll do one. And then so I got him in. So now I've got the baby Bertha, the little Bertha, and the big Bertha. The big Bertha is enormous. Like I could fit Nick in it and carry it around on my back. Whoa! What are you Wait. Uh, Atlas? Dismembered or membered? Membered. Okay. Yeah. I'm member. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's absolutely enormous. And as far as range bags go, like I was trying to think, 
you know, the little birth and the baby birth, I'm like, yeah, I'll be able to pack those up with medical stuff, with gun stuff, like no problem whatsoever. But the big Bertha, I'm going to have to like get creative because I don't know that I have enough gun stuff to even fill that thing. It's like a shipping container yeah, it, with it backpack is. straps. It's a context with back, backpack straps. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that, that should actually be fun. They're, they're coming out with all kinds of good stuff. I noticed that he's been putting the, what was it? Not the Widowmaker, but the Black Widow glasses online. Uh, that that's going to be very, very, very soon. Uh, Tim R says, "Love my hack at two pistol." Now, if I only had ammo, I, I know that. Uh, Catholic Gundamentalist says, "Sean, which one can fit a broken down 16 inch AR-15 and not look tactical?" I think all of the Berthas kind of have a little bit of tactical looks. But I mean, I could probably put like six AR-15s into the Big Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. WLS Angel One says Big Bertha weighs a ton, loaded too. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, it's huge. You could put a mini in it, and I, by like that I mean, Cooper? yeah, the, the like automobile. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Anyway, go check out HackettEquipment dot com and use coupon code WLS is life for twenty one percent discount, bigger than anyone else has, because that's what we do for you all day, every day. Uh, let's get back to it. Oh, I don't want that one. This one. Nope. That one. There we go. Um, Where are we at here? Aaron, take the next one. All right. The next one is, let me get back to that screen. I was in the middle of solitaire from uh, Jack B. <laughs> yes. What are the pros of a striker fire trigger? Most of the time when I hear anyone review a striker fired pistol, they say something to the effect of the trigger ain't bad for a striker fired. If reviews have equality uh, excuse me if reviewers have a quality it it with a qual- mm, mm, qualified mm. god if reviewers have to qualify it with for a striker fired why do you even why do you, why does it even exist why do they even exist are there people out there who prefer the feel of a striker to a hammer i've never shot a striker fired pistol that i liked there are some very good strikers uh but the biggest thing is simplicity and safety it's it's way easier to make a uh, cheap, decent striker-fired pistol uh, than it is hammer-fired or I don't know what other method you would use, I guess. But but then a hammer-fired uh, system that that is inexpensive and and decent, an electric-fired, an electric-fired. Yeah, it would probably be cheaper than that. I mean, for the time being. Yeah, Jeremy, you look like you're about to say something. Oh, um, no. I mean, the caveat is always there for a striker fire because the way that those, you know, it's like, oh, that feels great for a double action because inherently in a double action, you need to cock the hammer before it goes flying up and nails the firing pin. So, you know, much like a, a, a striker fire, it's, uh, you know, that's great because unless it's a... I mean, honestly, unless it's a single action only, you're not going to get the cream of the crop of the triggers. It's just because of, you know, physics. Yeah. I mean, I do have some and striker engineering. fires. I do have striker fires that, I f- that are awesome triggers, but they're generally aftermarket, which makes me think, why don't, why don't they just put like a really good trigger in it the first time? Like I have a bunch of MMPs that have apex triggers and they're awesome. Because most plebs don't care. That's fair. Yeah, because... Because they're going for uh, cheap, cheap, safe. Don't don't doubt and place the trigger, man. The cops will nail your ass to the wall well, if you shoot somebody with a modified gun. Don't forget that the f-ing average gun owner is like the McCloskeys from Missouri. Like right. that that is that is peak performance in in the average gun owner. So don't forget though they don't give a f- about triggers. Are you talking uh, about McCloskey's the uh, the sausage people? No, I'm t- no, he's talking about. Uh, oh, I had sausage for dinner, Italian sausage. Uh, so. You have Italian sausage every night for dinner, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> How is Jim, by the way? At, no, at the my wife's from Jim. Jim. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I had taco pizza tonight, and it was phenomenal. I think he was talking about Where was it from? McCluskey the band. No, I was talking about the the pink shirt and the striped shirt lady. Wait, the used car place? All oh, right, forget about it. No, I had my pizza from a place called Beeline. It's like this hole in the wall bar by my house. It, 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 they should have called it Beehole if it's a hole in the wall. But no, if you go to their web, <laughs> if you go to like uh, Yelp or whatever it is, it actually has a picture of a hole in the wall from in their bathroom. Is it a <laughs> hole? Because the CDC says those are okay. Did oh, it? I saw that. <laughs> I had no, I had no idea that was a thing. Like still, still a thing. Eh. <laughs> still a thing. thing. It's like a CDC post about not getting the COVID during sexual intercourse, and it was like. <laughs> Holes are okay. 
<laughs> hey, Aaron, you're wearing a polo. Yeah, I wear it at work. I just okay. I was like, there's been something real. Okay, well, hold on. Is that true? Because when we talked earlier, you, you looked like <laughs> well, Samuel L. Jackson looking all crazy and black snake moan with just like right. a wife beater on. <laughs> Uh, well, I put the, I had the wife beater on because I was I was handling the chickens, and I figured I'd look like a as as much like a person who would handle chickens all day <laughs> as possible. But then I come back over here, and you know, all business. I like it. Got to class right. it up. Uh, Alex, any thoughts on triggers? Not really. I mean, it's it it's use what you're comfortable with, and if you're comfortable, with whatever came in the gun, then you're not comfortable enough with the gun. So get better training. You know, it, it's funny too because people are like, you know, that's a good bullpup for you know, or the trigger's good on a bull, for a bullpup. You mm-hmm. know, bullpups are also notorious for having really crappy triggers. That is true. Yeah, again, because physics and simple machines exist. All right, uh, Nick, why don't you take the next one? All right, <clears throat> Matt G says. Ah-ah-ham. <laughs> Ah-ham. I'm <laughs> We are the knights who say me. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> something, something mackerel. Alex, did you 3D print your microphone? Say what now? Did you 3D print your microphone? Um, Part of it. Okay. I was like, wait a second. Look at that. And the cage around the mic, is that 3D printed? No, that's some I got off Amazon. Oh, nice. All right. So. This mic, for some reason, like when I want it, is like the wrong spot for the the, the threading on the on the uh, the holes in place, so it's like loose. Because where I really want it, when it tightens up, it's like here. Uh, well, I really, not, I really I'm want it. over there. I really want this right here, but you can tighten it. No, no I can't. No, no, I can't. Oh well, send me a, a send it me a link. All the way tight. I He's just practicing. Yeah. Started stripping. You hear it? Okay. All right. <laughs> Still does it. All right, fair enough. We can we can order a new one. Okay, I get it. Nick, go ahead. <laughs> hey, have you, tried, have you tried some flex flex tape on that? I'm Was looking to pick up a ten well, millimeter to use as a bear stopper while bow hunting in grizzly country. <laughs> I was curious if you might have any My suggestions curious. or advice on particular brands or models to stay away from in ten millimeter. I do prefer a smaller gripped pistol, <laughs> and re- reliability is the most important feature. Also, weight is a consideration, as the pistol is just a paperweight until I need it. Hopefully never will. Extra weight tends to get left at camp. With that in mind, would a SIG or 1911 be recommended? I.e. CZ Dan Wesson 1911, SIG 220 Elite, SIG 1911 TAC Ops, or should I just stick with the Gorilla Gripped Monstrosity that is the Glock 20? Other suggestions? As I understand it, 10 millimeter tends to jam a bit more if the feed ramps are too short. Is this correct? Thanks for the show, guys. I listen to them as I bop down the road in the semi, and they really brighten my day. Allegedly, Matt. I've never seen anyone sign it. Allegedly. Matt. I like how this is like, I want someone with a small grip and a 10 millimeter. Okay. I mean, like a single stack 1911, a 220 is... Slim ish. I would yeah. want more capacity, quite honestly. Especially in bear country. Yeah. I mean, I would like want if, the, if, the, if the purpose of it is to f- a bear up because it's trying to eat me, I want more than seven shots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with 10 millimeter hole, nine. I want to be about nine. I want to be high. I consider a, a larger caliber as well. I mean, so, it's like a black bear. So Glock I mean, 20. Glock that, 20. Uh, that is the answer, right? Like, yeah. The tank folio. The XDM, uh, the two two seven, the high point uh, carbine. Don't get the Chris Vector in ten millimeter. Like maybe they're okay, but the one that we had was garbage. Yeah, yeah. It's Matt's Matt Matt. My buddy Matt saying is two twenty and ten millimeter, which is great, but I want more capacity. Yeah. My my poly eighty that takes the Glock twenty mags is a fifteen plus one. Like Jesus, that's awesome. Like I want, like I want that. You know, the XDM is a fifteen plus one. The tank folios are a fifteen or sixteen plus one. Um, now, there's not a lot of options in ten millimeter, but uh, you know, I want, I want all of the, I want all of the millimeters. Yeah, 
Yeah, again, I, w- I would suggest a higher caliber. I mean, ten mil. I mean, fine. Well, yeah, if we're talking. Yeah, I mean, if it's black bear, sure, whatever. I mean, I'd rather have a ten millimeter than a nine millimeter or thirty eight. I'd rather have a four fifty four Casul. Yes. But, like, With that, and uh, what's the Taurus that we have? The raging you know hunter. What I think Raging Hunter. Yeah. The Raging Judge. No, the, the, ra- raging, the raging Hunter and 454 Casul just like strung across your chest. Can you imagine how baller you would be No with that? shirt. No shirt. Big old man. De- uh, Deagle 50 AE. Bifurcated <laughs> belly button in all its glory. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> nestled there between your breasticles. Sweat dripping off the nips. Jiggling as you waddle down the trail. That's peak performance. Right there, folks. <laughs> That's oh man! <laughs> so right, I, I came <laughs> on the drive over here. On the drive, <laughs> on the drive over here, I got busted uh, looking at a woman's boobs. <laughs> uh, so I'm driving along, right, and I see this woman walking down the street, and I'm like, "Is she? Is she? Sh- is she shirtless? She looks topless." And like, as I get closer, the more topless she looks. And then I get really close, and it's, like, right up here by the building, so I'm slowing down to, 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 to like, to turn. And I look over, and I'm, like, staring at her, and she looks up, and we make eye contact. Oh, yes. And, uh, she and was then wearing... you get closer? Oh, God. Uh, she was wearing, like, a, like a, one of those sweaters that you wrap, like, one side over the other, and then they, like, tie off or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like that, but it was really far open, and it, like, came down to her belly button, but also so did her boobs. Oh, good. And then it, it was flesh colored. Oh. So like from a distance, it looked like she wasn't wearing a shirt because like most of her boobs were out. <laughs> um, it was just like the bottoms of them, like nestled into the sweater thing. Oh, Kinky. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so like we made eye contact and then she like looked over her shoulder at me and I looked in my mirror because I was like, oh, <laughs> we just made eye contact. I was like, please don't follow me. Was and she, she like she like looked back over her shoulder at me and like did something with her hair and I was like no oh god <laughs> and Nick's like, like Nick's like what? so anyway I got this chick with a flesh colored shirt in my car <laughs> <laughs> the trunk he's like we can't go over an hour tonight <laughs> <laughs> it's hot out there I didn't crack a window <laughs> uh, I don't think you have enough meth for that dude <laughs> did we answer that question oh, God was there a question <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I literally don't remember. Um, yeah. Go to dear. Uh, sorry. We like shooting.com slash dear WLS. Submit your questions. We will get them in the show. Uh, I promise very, very, very soon. And let's move on. But before we do Patriot patch company, their patch this month was probably my favorite Patriot patch company patch that I've ever seen ever had. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got I mean, it. I gave it to you. Did I? Yeah. The Tree of Liberty must be watered occasionally with the blood of tyrants and patriots. I don't think I got that one. Oh, yet. it's in the office on the desk then. Really? Really, Nick? I don't think I got that one. Oh, man. It is It is absolutely one of my favorites. Did Aaron, you got it, right? Yes. What did you think? One of my favorites. Absolutely. I yeah. heard it was one of Sean's favorites. Well, I, I liked it first, so he's copying me. Whoa. I copy Nick, not you. Whoa. Whoa! No, it's not. It's not the Joey Whoa. All right, I'll show you right here. So this is the shirt, not the patch, but the patch looks exactly like the shirt. Oh, come on! Oh, that's weird that they made a T-shirt shaped patch and then put that image in on it. Yeah. So it's the Tree of Liberty, uh, water with the blood of patriots and tyrants, best every two hundred years. Anyway, it's it awesome. Seems like that would be like is it one tree or is there a lot of trees? How big is this tree? Why, why does it need so much blood? I don't is know. It like the, is it like the tree from uh, Little Shop of What I think it's is a vampire tree. What I think is really funny is that oh, <laughs> when when I googled it, uh, it came up on like a site that I guarantee Patriot Patch Company doesn't use. So they're like basically counterfeiting it. <laughs> that was the first link that I clicked on. So Jake, you should probably look into that. But yeah, it's awesome. Patch of the Month Club is great. Um, they're doing more shirts lately, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, PatriotPatch.co is the website, and the coupon code is WLS10. Saves you money all day, every day. It's time for Not Guns. Not Guns, Not Gear, Just the Gang. Hashtag Not Guns. Aaron, what do you have for us tonight? All right, so normally I, I go with a pretty light topic for this uh, for this segment, but tonight... I think we'll go a little bit heavier. Confederate flag. 
Is it offensive, guys? Is it offensive? Like, all right. So he, I'm gonna throw out some uh, some opinions that I've heard. Some are my own. Please um, define which are yours and which you've heard. Oh, uh, do I have to? Yes. So, okay. My <laughs> personal my personal opinion of the Confederate flag is it's a piece of history. It's I don't find it offensive. I'm not offended by it. I understand why some people may feel that way. But for me personally, um, it doesn't bother me. Now, if it was like a swastika on a flag, I, I would be like, I would be offended. I would just be kind of dumbfounded that someone would actually do that. So, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to find a, some sort of correlation or relationship to me of how I can, how I can see it the way other people would see it. Um, that, and that's where I'm basically at at this point. Jeremy? Um, I mean, I think anybody who's offended by anything ever is a so, I, I mean, I think that's fair. That. Yeah, I think that's fair. I am offended. <laughs> off, Nick. I don't really care if you want to wave that flag or whatever. Then go for it. Seems kind of dumb to me, but whatever. Why? Why is it dumb? Uh, I don't really. I don't know. I'm not really interested in like celebrating the losing side. In a uh, conflict, but that's just me. That's why nobody should be allowed to fly the Union Jack. You uh, say you. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Alex. What do you think? I mean, I think you have a right to be offended. I think you have a right to offend people, and it shouldn't be illegal to do to do either of those. So I don't know. It, it's a. Uh, <laughs> That was a really cheery jingle. I'm so sorry. It was an autoplay video. <laughs> sorry, Alex. The floor no, is yours. Like, yeah, I, I, I think you have a right to do both, to, to be both, and uh, any sort of law coming in there to, to sort of shut one shut one side of that argument down is ill-founded and going to be misused. I guess, yeah. I mean, I am actually with all of you. I, I feel like I don't f***ing care about a flag. Like I, it's not something that I would fly. Like I understand why people like, I understand both sides of it. Like I understand the history. Like I don't want to delete history. I don't want to erase history. I don't want to pretend like it didn't happen. I don't care about it. And I kind of feel the same way about the Nazi flag and you know, like it's not something that I have any attachment to clearly, but I don't think that it should be banned either. Like I think that people should have freedom to do whatever they want, even if it's stupid. Yeah, I, I, I never thought it should be the, no, the I know. Nazi flag. But I know. it would just be like, I'd, I'd see someone doing it and I'd just be dumbfounded that someone would be so Agreed. openly yeah, openly flippant about everything. Yeah. Like social norms. I just, yeah, I think what a what a stupid thing to get upset about. It, it just reminds me of that thing. I know Jeremy shares this meme or memes with this on it all the time, but can you imagine being so weak that words hurt you? Like that whole thing. It's exactly that. I just I thought you were going to talk about the other one. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean I, I, I kind of get it when people are um, bothered by it just because of the uh, because of the history that is there. No, I mean but, I can I can understand that, but yeah. I can understand why somebody who was born in, in that time period would be really offended by it. And well, and it's I, like did, did you ever hear the uh, explanation about how like um, uh, the uh, the First World War went hilarious in 2004 cuz that's when the last uh the last person who actually fought in World War 1 died. So like at that point it's a free for all you can make fun of it as much as you want and but we still have World War 2 vets that are alive. So we'll get to make fun of them in like 2024, 2034 something like that when like the last World War 2 vet dies. Because then where nobody's around that actually lived through it. So then you can actually start making jokes about that kind of shit again. <laughs> nice. Al- Alex, what were you going to say? No, I, I think uh, it, it doesn't matter so much that people are offended by it or that they're, you know, that they're concerned or that people want to have that sort of display of, of, you know, material that, you know, we know people are going to find offensive. It's how those people are going to react to that display that's that, that, that causes the problem in the, you know, the modern day. 
you know, as opposed to like, oh, these people need to be removed from life or Twitter or fired or whatever, as opposed to, hey, maybe I should understand what these people are saying and why they're putting on this display and maybe we can converse about this and have that level of discourse and maybe understand each other as opposed to just scream at each other because we're our feet our fifis are hurt yeah well obviously if you're explaining it, it's just because you hate clearly clearly yeah. that's the only thing the only reason yeah now i i will say i don't think that it should be flown above uh government buildings or institutions because it's that's state flag well is it a state flag? Where not anymore? It's on a few states. Okay, flags. it's, it's okay, on a okay. few. Yeah, but but I mean, flying the actual like just the Confederate flag, which has happened. Um, oh, I believe it was South Carolina a few years back uh, decided to stop flying it above the um, state capitol building. Like it's a flag of a foreign country, right? So uh, it's a uh, yeah a, a flag of a country that attacked the the Union. So that, that seems like a. I mean, weird they were both both sides were Americans. I think that that's important to remember. Both sides were Americans. They had different they beliefs. They were pardoned. There was no right, but it's it's still uh, a flag of a, an attempted foreign nation. How's that? I mean, oh, okay. they're trying. I see what they're trying saying. to secede. It, yeah. it would be like flying a Canadian flag over a you know military institution. Uh, I mean, does that mean something. like anybody who flies a Irish flag or an Italian I didn't, flag? I didn't or... say. That I said we shouldn't fly it, like Ireland an Irish or, flag or, over. They're not this country, like. But they didn't yeah, attack. The Ireland never attacked us, though. Yeah, but hold up, hold up, Nick. Finish what you're saying. Italy never attacked us. I said Ireland. I I'm not saying Ireland helped the Brits. I'm not saying f- those people. I'm saying it doesn't make sense to fly those over a uh, over a government facility or building or uh, or whatever you know, unless it's like a military installation that also has Irish troops there. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there aren't any Confederate troops around anymore. Um, I could be wrong. <laughs> I mean, people are in this people in this country like fly ISIS flags on their porches and Where? yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> but like, also that should not fly on a above a government building. <laughs> I agree or... with that. But I don't care if they fly it on their house. I'm yeah. definitely gonna try to move if it's in my neighborhood. <laughs> Your neighbors throw them up. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not today, ISIS. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, I don't care. Like I get it, and, and yeah, there were there were there were uh, four, they, there were countries that that we fought. Italy being one, um, Mexico being another one. I mean, yes, we had wars with them, but it wasn't like Spain. As, yeah, but it wasn't like the Civil War. That was a pretty nasty one. I mean, really, pro Spain yeah. and pro Spain accessories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you broke Sean. <laughs> That's just too long for a show title. I started writing it and I was like, oh, never mind. I'm tired now. Pro Spain. Pro Spain. <laughs> uh, pro Spain accessories. Maybe that's a good one. Okay, let me write that down. Anyway, yeah, I mean. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. James Allen says the German flag uh, is popular in his area and he sees it flying a lot, but it's not the Nazi flag, it's the German flag. They were still Germans. But, well, I mean, all Nazi. well, no, I can't even say that. I was going to say all Nazis were German, but not all Germans were Nazis, but that's not true. No, no, that, that is true. Not not all Germans were Nazis. It was, a, it was a political party. Well, the first part of it wasn't true, though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, anyway. I mean, it was a political party within the German, you know, German Germany. It wasn't like everyone in Germany was a Nazi. Yeah. Uh, we all seem to agree on it's it. It's not good enough to just not be a, passively not a Nazi. You got to be actively anti-Nazi. Okay, well, Joe. I think we all should be anti-Nazi. Just saying. <laughs> but think of all the good things Hitler did. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, he killed Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> the number one good thing. All right, good job. Well, what was, cool. the, what was the one guy that goes? Uh, he managed to conduct an awful lot of medical testing without hurting any animals. Oh boy! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right, this is brought to you by Sonoran Desert Institute. Go check them out, sdi.edu. If you have listened to the show for a long time, maybe you have checked them out. Whether you just want to learn like a specific skill. Are you cold now? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I can turn your fan off. Thank you. I'll point it at myself. Okay. I'm fat. I'm always hot. Uh, or you just want a uh, GI Bill. Like if you have GI Bill that you don't think you're going to use, you could use it to do gun stuff. So 
sdi.edu. And it's time for the news. Aaron, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, Sig gives the P uh, three. Dude, who's highlighting everything? Stop it. Oh, me. Sorry. <laughs> the P9, the P938, the SAS treatment, which basically means it's got like a little circle dot site on it that runs. It's almost like a, was a trench site. Is that what that's called? Yeah. I mean, so this mm-hmm. SIG put this on the SIG P365 SAS first, and now they're putting it on everything else. Yeah, it looks stupid. I don't like it. I've heard I mean, good and bad. It's fine. I just that nobody's going to buy a 938. Like, oh my god, tons of people f-ing buy 938s. Not anymore. I sold, I sold one 938 in like the last two years. I don't want one. Yeah, take it back. Two of them. I sold two of them. I've sold like you know forty 365s, 365XLs. Blah 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 blah. But Alex, yeah, have you seen two. these? Say what? No, I haven't. All right, I'll throw it up on the screen here. So it's like this weird. Sorry, Jeremy, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's all right. Um, so yeah, it's like this thing that drops into almost like an optics cut, and I don't know. It's like a trench site, but it's uh, it's uh, was it um, tritium not, and fiber optic? Tritium, yes, yeah. that's what I was looking for. Yeah, it's kind I mean, of the, mostly said, fiber optic. The tritium is actually pretty weak in those. Yeah, and as as Matt A says, it's SIG, it stands for SIG anti snag, the SAS. Yeah, not to be confused with the British SAS. Correct. Yeah, the, what the special air service? Oh, that what it is? Coolguns dot com. Thank you. That's what I wanted. When I clicked the <laughs> picture to enlarge the picture, it takes me to a page selling guns. Perfect. Yeah, I I don't care for these. I don't think that they're necessarily bad. Like that the design design is bad. I have just seen a decent number of broken ones. Um, oh, interesting. That makes sense. Uh, SAS treatment is solving problems. No one has, which is their sites snagging on holsters and clothes. Yep. Yeah. Like yeah, that's, that's my first, my first thought is who has this problem? Why are you not like, if you're, so, if you're having problems snagging on your, on your clothing, like you need to listen, deal with that in training. Yeah. Uh, obviously <laughs> because of the price, you know, SIGs aren't cheap. It's to people in their cashmere sweaters, and they don't want them to be uh, oh, that's fair. snagged. That's fair. You know. Yeah. Yep. If I had a cashmere sweater, I'd be pretty careful with it, too. It's all those pocket carry <laughs> Dude. Meanwhile, people are putting, Actually, uh, like, RMRs and on pistols. They're like, let me add this one-and-a-half-inch <laughs> lever that sticks out at a 90-degree <laughs> angle from my slide. Right. It, it, it's the guaranteed snag site. Yeah. I, I want to point out something. I just want to point out something to that that left us a review on Monday. Yeah. Nick is still here and not f-ing his brains out. Exactly. Oh yeah. Now it's, what? it's coming anytime. I'm really hoping <laughs> that we hit that hour. Uh, we're, uh, we're going to nice. We're going to Are we right over the hour. Next story. Yeah. Next story. Uh, Sphere, which is a company that produces uh, ammo, uh, lands a one, uh, $112 million contract with DHS for nine millimeter service ammo, which basically means that the DHS got 12 boxes of ammo. <laughs> at current prices yeah yes tax dollars hard at work right uh yeah but they get really good deals when they do that i mean it's department of homeland security like i can't yeah, they're not they're not paying 55 dollars for a 50 round box of spear gold dots true they're 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 paying like dirt and cheap true that double true uh next story uh for uh vortex came out with a a new uh holographic site the MG UH-1 Generation 2, which is basically a holographic site that's uh, made for night vision. All right. what's, what's really cool is that this one is souped up. It's got a V8 in it. Um, I believe they're <laughs> they're handmade. It's not a Gremlin. Right. Well, you know, it's got a hammy. Uh, so no, my buddy had an uh, it's Mercedes. Eagle. Mercedes AMG. Oh, sorry. The AMG Eagle. Do you guys remember the Eagle? AM, uh, AMG. It's about 100 years old. American Motor Company. Oh yeah, okay. AMC, yeah. not AMG. Oh, was it? Yeah. But okay, you were on it. But it, he had the Eagle, and he had an eight-track tape player, and it cracked me up. So Vor- high school. So Vortex has this holographic site. It looks pretty cool. I kind of want one. It is seven ninety nine no, MSRP. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Ouch! But it's got four different modes for your night vision. Yeah, but 
I'll Why are you buying one. a cheap optic with your expensive night vision? How? Because the night vision is expensive. Right, but you need a you you need a good optic for that, or just bypass it and get a laser. How much is a an EOTech, EOTech. an EXPS, whatever three or whatever it is that is night vision compatible? Those are know. what like six hundred bucks. Oh, I thought they were more. I thought they were like double that. Oh man, I don't know. Let's see. But uh, I I wonder how this optic compares because. I'm pretty sure that's in that territory, uh, in EOTech territory. I know you're trying to pull it up. <laughs> oh, God. So if if you guys wait a couple of years, then the, the third generation will come out, and the second generation will be affordable. Well, I'll be good. Is this a brand new Starlight? What is that, a flute? Yeah, is I was like, like is this playing a flute or what <laughs> in this ad? Is that a recorder? You know? Well, remember, it's not really... Vaping, you should know robot... Who's got a robot? You're the you in your mouth constantly. Bender. Is that a robot? Oh, I mean, robots even have much larger. It's the exact same price. Can. Matt L looked it up. Uh, EXPS three is seven hundred. Oh, okay, nice. All right, so same so, price. I wonder how they compare. Yeah, I'm very curious actually too. We could get an EOTech. Well, curious. Hey, that those shoes are sixty percent off. Oh, good. When they're forty more percent, I might actually get some. Wait, sixty percent off? Is sixty percent off when you like take one shoe off and then you start to slip your heel out of the other? And then you throw one shoe at George Bush? Yes. Uh, oh wait, it's from Banggood. Never mind, it's Japanese or I mean Chinese. What uh, what website is this? Holy Gat Daily. Okay, so they've got a plane of flute and Chinese knockoff shoes. Perfect. But don't forget about the rat. Eating French fries? What? I don't have that. Oh, I have a rat playing French fries. Weird. Oh, and a chick laying in bed with a pillowcase. Oh, good. Thanks, Scott Daly. Uh, but, Great wait, ads. I got to open up mine to see what ads I get. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> hang on. Uh, I got a rock. <laughs> nice Charlie Brown reference. Uh, you know what? I didn't get anything because I have an ad blocker on. Nice. So do I, which is weird. Uh, next story or last story, I should say. Uh, let me get back over there. The last story is Indian Army wants another 72,000 American-made SIG 716 rifles. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that they're getting ready to go to war with Pakistan and China, bro. Wait, who's this? Uh, India. India. Oh, India. When you said Indians, I was like, why would Indians be packing up and going over to fight Pakistanis? Because okay, we're sick I, of I this flag. Said Indian. I said India, the Indian Army. I guess I did say Indian. Yeah, I'm sorry. So anyhow, um, yeah, so uh, the rape culture country is getting some more guns. Because right now they're rolling with, like, all these old World War II rifles, I think. Weren't they? Um, oh, no, they've had all they kinds of talking about making shit. their own? Oh, they did make their own, and it was horrible. Yeah. It was like an AK variant of some sort. Kind of. Are you going to keep scrolling through this uh, article, Sean? The okay. INSAS. That's what it was. The in- INSAS. The <laughs> They named their rifle after incels. <laughs> no, no incest. Uh, whoa, whoa! They're really into it. Like, not that wow. they do it, but just you know, it's what you know. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're in incest, you got to be really into it. They've been. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, this rifle was a product. Of it. This is not at all pleasant to no. experience. I can't. I God, don't. I yeah, definitely don't want one. Sean, did you recently shop for shoes? No. Because now you have two. Oh, shoes. wait a. F- in second, I literally have been talking about shoes for the last two or three days because I've been trying to find some new shoes. And uh, dude, Payless Footwear closed. Fa- famous really? Footwear? No, Payless. 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 Yeah. Payless. Famous Footwear. Payless. I went there. It sucked. But I've been searching for shoes for like so the last it? few days. D- did you, do you like remember? It though? Do you remember? Oh, I, crown I have a website shoes? for you. Do I remember shoe. what? Crown shoes? No. Uh, it must have been. It might have been a local thing when I was a kid. Do you remember Zapados? Yeah. Do you guys have a Pharaohs near you where they come out with the the big drum? I don't know what the f- you're talking about. Like like bong 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 <laughs> drum or like container drum? Like no, the side boom drum. Okay. Oh no. Anyway, yeah, I'm looking for shoes, and because of COVID, everything's f- up, and Payless is closed, and now I have to go to the f- shoe department in the mall. Except the mall doesn't open till eleven, and I'm like, fuck. Who opens at 11? The mall. It's a f-ing disaster, man. The mall uh, opens at 11. So anyway, that, that explains why f-ing Google tracking me. 
listening to every word I say. Have you tried Zapdos? No, because I don't want to buy them online because I have wide feet and I need 4E. <laughs> so I've, I, this is website I, I've seen boots at. It's called uh, B-E-R-E-L-I, and they sell shoes like super dirt cheap there. Wait, is it? Bet- this is a website that I go to to buy boots from. It's called Boot Barn. It's like a barn full of boots, and they sell a lot of boots. That the the cool. only problem is that they all smell like because they're in a barn. I just realized somebody angry reacted our show. Brian Cooper. Okay. Brian Cooper. You. Maybe he Brian, angry is that, is reacted because that, that Sean Cooper's funny. brother. I don't know. Is it because I said, "Think of all the good things Hitler did." <laughs> uh, John Doe said, "You set my Google Home off saying in Google tracking everything I do." <laughs> uh, okay, Google. <laughs> okay, Google. Play child. Seventh son of a seventh son by Iron Maiden. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I hope your Google does it and you get the FBI I totally rating. I forgot that that's there. I always forget that thing's there. Okay, Google. Oh, enough. I hope the FBI raids you right now. I had no. I, I keep forgetting that thing is there. I never use it. Chris Hansen's going to pop into your chicken coop and be like, have a seat. I, uh, I was hanging out with Sean a few nights ago and... I was like, okay, Google, play a song. And he was like, it only reacts to my voice. And I got up and walked over and just kept yelling at his thing, his Google thing, until it responded. And then it played the song I wanted. Yeah, that's true. I I successfully played Sexual Healing. Tack Daddy says, New Balance. No, thanks, bro. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see that that video? Which one? Uh, Dude Dad about being a basic dad. Oh, Brian Cooper's watching. He said, hey, f- you. I'm not mad. I must have hit it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Sean Cooper's brother? I don't know. Sean, uh, Sean's bummed that Payless closed because he always bought those beige uh, Velcro shoes. Well, no, I, I don't. The all. ones with the, uh, d- d- so the Velcro's like two strips was attached in the middle. So it's really only one big one. I, I, yeah. over. I can't afford Nikes, so I get Mikey's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, f- that's enough. Uh, All right, I play. I play a Call of Duty with Brian. It's cool. Awesome. Yeah, Alex. I'll, uh, I'll be on tonight, bro. Alex, thanks for being with bro. us, man. Yeah, no problem. Good, good to be on, bro. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Where can people find uh, Control Pew and all the 3D printing wonderfulness? Oh, by the way, f- you. I'm like completely addicted. My 3D printer goes like seven days a week, 24 hours a day, pretty much. <laughs> he's he's, he's uh, printing this world's smallest flashlight. <laughs> you know, you should be printing the Mac 11, dude. I want Dude. to. Bruh. This can be yours. Oh, so what do you put in there? The Mac 11. Uh, so there is a company called MAF Arms. Um, they're selling wind chimes. It's the parts kit for the Mac 11 build that we're doing. Um, yeah, good stuff. You should join the beta. Hit me up on Keybase. Okay, I will. Because I want one of those. Yeah, well, I you guys should join print. the beta too. Well, I don't have a 3D printer. printer. Okay, well, you should get a 3D printer by following the instructions in the guide.controlp.com. So I have kids, uh, <laughs> so I can't afford a printer. And then so if I got one, they would break it. Sell the kids to science and then buy a printer. No, sell the kids to Wayfair. That's hot right now. I was now. just going to go Wayfair. Oh, yeah, Wayfair. <laughs> way, much, way more money. And that was guide, guide.controlp.com. That's where, yep. I mean, I just asked you and you told me specifically what it says there, but that was <laughs> that was a special. Uh, you, you were on the show, so like it made sense. Yeah. But yeah. It's all good. I have been back there to reference things multiple times. Um, yeah, I 3D print constantly. It's Dude, awesome. Let's see, let's see the builds, man. Put them up on Instagram. Yeah, I will once I actually finish one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving all the uh, comments of what kind of shoes you wear, Sean. I see we got Skechers, Crocs, Crocs. Skechers, Lugs. I, I figured you're more of an UGG kind of guy. No. Multicam Altimas. Those are pretty cool. Maybe those, like, remember those, uh, like, looks like Clydesdale feet, those big furry boots? No. Of the 80s. Yeah, no. You really don't, don't? You don't remember those? No. So anyway. Uh, Google, Google furry boots. I don't want to. Control Pew. Okay, Google. Com. Furry boots. <laughs> it's going to bring up something weird. Yeah. <laughs> like furries okay, having Google. sex. Furry uh, boots. Control Pew.com. Uh, g- join a gun-related advocacy group. Actually, just give money to the FPC and get involved with them. Suicide prevention lines 1-800-273-8255. Or you okay, can text Google. 741741. Okay. We're here live every week on Monday and Wednesdays on demand every single day. Go to welikeshooting.com 
slash show to subscribe. And as we always say, thanks for listening. Get medical training and... Uh, Sean is 3D printing a bra for his low-hanging... <laughs> something about Spain? <laughs> Pro Spain accessories. Uh, All right, so my son... I bought my son some Heelys because that's what he wanted for Christmas one year. Yeah. Jesus. Never, ever worn them. He never wore them. Sean, uh, 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 Sean. Tanner, you never wore those Heelys. They're still in your closet, un- unopened. He's like, Dad, we don't have any f-ing pavement around here. It's dirt and grass. The basement. I want Heelys. You do? I do. Heelys? Don't you? Or yeah, Heelys. I, tr- I, tr- yeah. I tried them. I nearly broke my neck. Have you seen the video of like the dude doing stupid yes. Heely tricks? <laughs> it's amazing. That's you guys, awesome. Do you guys remember soaps? No. I had a pair of soaps. They had like a um, like a hard, smooth plastic arch so you could grind. You like grind on rails and stuff with them. It's pretty cool. Oh, so like you could like freestyle walk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> freestyle walk. That's the title. <laughs> Did you think that show was worth a dollar? Help the cast by visiting lovewls.com.